Well, thank you so much, Sylvie and Marlon, for joining me today on Poppy and Vine Pinky Maker. It's so great to have you all the way from France, not Paris. Um, but I'm so excited to learn more about Du Cochon. I'm going to officially turn it over to you to tell us more. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay, for having us and Poppy and Vine for interviewing. Yes. A yes, little, yes. little company over here in Bordeaux, France. Oui. Oui. Very uh, exciting. Well. So, uh, well, we'll just start, I guess, with the history. Yeah. Uh, so, France, maybe? Yeah. So, let's start off with so, you guys were previously California residents and yeah. you decided to hop over the pond and land in France. How, how did you guys kind of come to that decision and Bordeaux specifically? Well, we traveled the world a year before to several countries around the world. And then we kept coming back here. And then as far as where we lived, we decided to just spin the globe and say, right there. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> well, well, I mean, kind of, kind kind of. of. Yeah, okay, that's great. Yeah. Well, it's, it's um, I have family in um, France in the east, eastern side, so I spent a lot of time here as a child. Oh, okay. Uh, in, in France, in the east and in, in Paris. And when we were traveling the world, we were looking for something a little bit more quiet as far as just lifestyle, standard of living, food, food standards, uh, safety. Mm -hmm. The United States was kind of going through a time. Yes. <laughs> the last four years. So we yeah. decided to take advantage of my EU citizenship, which with Poland being part of the Schengen, we were able to move to anywhere in Europe in the Schengen uh, without a working visa. Okay. And then Marlon was able to apply for a resident card. Yeah. Which he got. Oh, uh, that's after, great. After some time. So we just decided France was the closest thing to what we had known from my childhood. And he really liked France too, because of the jazz musicians that moved here from the States and like just really open to, Yeah. Uh, you know, we want to go more on that. Um. Uh, let's just say they're not as, um, how do I say this? They're not as, um, they're not as big into a lot of the racial undertones that exist in America. Mm -hmm. so, uh, France is a little older, so they've kind of grown past that. Good. So, so that made it a bit of, uh, a bit more of a, uh, an, attractive place to move. Yes, I could I could uh, see that being a, a very high priority. Um, yeah, the last four years were really an unfortunate, <laughs> That's where you were <laughs> <laughs> an unfortunate period in our history that, um, but also very eye-opening and very important. And I think it um, shed a lot of light on conversations and topics that, um, have gone undiscussed for far too long. So um, there's some positives uh, in the grand scheme of things um, that hopefully will come from that. Right. Yeah. 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 Previous <laughs> administration. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, so I was I was talking to to my fiance Matt, and I was I was excited about you know joining you guys today because Sylvie and I previously worked together and. And I know, you know, I know you guys have been traveling after being married and things like that. And I thought it was so interesting that you, you went to France, the kind of land of butter and bread and cheese and made a vegan product. So how has that been received uh, in the community? Um, well, yeah, actually. it's, it's been received well. Um, we've had several large investor kind of um what you would call um angel uh -huh. investor, um you know yeah they were interested opportunities but 
you kind of have to be ready for those. Sure. So, but um, and for, in Bordeaux, sorry, go ahead, Sophie. I was gonna kind of go into the Bordeaux. Um, Bordeaux is actually the one of the few cities in Bordeaux that's green, the green party. So they're really environmentally mm. focused. Um, really trying to open up that because as you mentioned, France, land of butter and cream and meat and um, in Bordeaux, there's a large community of vegans. Mm. And um, it's actually, what did what are the statistics that you read? It went up 24% last year. Um, wow. 2019, so. Veganism has grown around 25% in the last year and what a lot of folks don't know that uh, as far as the quality of food here in Europe, uh, the European Union outlawed genetically modified food way back in 1999. Wow. Yeah, so the quality of food, I re remember when we first arrived and we went shopping and we bought fruit and we were like, I remember what this like right yeah it's it's I remember so. having one of those kind of same like epiphany moments uh it was here in the states and I had pulled out a blueberry and I was like blueberries aren't supposed to be this big I mean it was like a, a nickel like it was just such right. a big I was like what no <laughs> um but no it's uh impressive the stuff that they've taken um for their their food chains and their food supply and um you know what they do and you know do and don't allow I mean even down to like certain dyes and things like that I think that that you know um yeah we have a long way to go we'll just put it like that yeah I mean yeah. America has some great especially California has a lot of organic and you know the vegan movement is very big yeah there it has some really positives uh depending on where you live um, but the yeah, other, that's one thing about moving to France is the standard of quality of food. It's really quite noticeable and, and they are moving forward in, in the vegan. There's still some people that write, you know, comment on Facebook. Oh, what's vegan is someone wrote the other day. Oh, it's vegan. It's without milk and eggs. Is that even possible? And it's, you know, it, um, listen, we, <laughs> we still have some skeptics. Yeah. I mean, I think that will always be the case, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, but uh, we believe veganism is eventually going to be the future. And uh, I think there's a lot of discussion around that. And um, I mean, just the benefits for the planet as a whole in moving to a more um, vegetable based diet is there's a lot of conversation and um, and research around yeah. it. Yeah. And that's also beneficial, I think, more so for our bodies as well. Um, you know, what we can and can't process right. so easily. Yeah. Hold on one second. Yeah. My cat is <laughs> Cat's losing it. Yeah. Every oh. once in a while, my dog will run through. It's just like the product of being at home and working. <laughs> or the phone rings like it did earlier. It's just what it does. Um, you've all come to kind of just accept it. Oh, hi, kitty. Yeah. <laughs> so Sylvia, uh, I know you had a background in food. Marlon, do you have a background in food, or how did how did you how did you guys both kind of land in this business? Well, um, we were in the middle of lockdown. <laughs> no, uh, no, yeah. Uh, so when the <laughs> lockdown started, of course we did like everyone, and we just bought a lot of food and a lot of wine and we were just like well I guess we're just gonna be here and um I think she started experimenting with ice cream I don't even know why but I have a background in mixology okay so she started to experiment with the ice cream and I was like well what if we added certain kinds of bourbons or liquors and we just started to experiment until we were able to 
you, you know. Get the holy grail of vegan ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, the results have been astounding as far as the texture, the taste, the feel. Um, like traditional, it tastes just yeah. like traditional ice cream. And um, I started making, I wanted to make vegan ice cream for some time because one of my favorite things to make when I worked at restaurants in San Francisco and at Google was making ice cream. Mm -hmm. Because I love ice cream. Like, love it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Love it. Uh, but as I, you know, being a vegan, I was, that's one of the things I really missed was really good vegan ice cream. And then I tried different brands that had coconut milk or the soy, and they were always a little flat. Not mm -hmm. to knock anyone else's product, you know, at all. But for me, I wanted something that I didn't want to feel like I'm sacrificing my, sure. my, my jam, you know? So we just, you know, started playing with, with ingredients and yeah. with adding some, uh, we can't give away too many secrets, but adding some, some booze, uh, yeah. just a little bit. Um, uh, but we started experimenting and I wanted to keep it very basic. I didn't want to add any, um, additives, preservatives, you know, yeah, you wanted like, to keep it like true, really clean, really yeah. clean. And, ended up being seven base ingredients oh nice really clean except for the booze no, 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 no. Nice. Clean. Uh, you know. i mean but still there's probably only like four ingredients in that too so we're we're good right 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 right, right. good for circulation you know and yeah. uh we and then you know of course if you have for example vanilla bean we just released a new flavor today, vanilla bean bergamot, mm. which is primo. It's so good. Wow. We mm. had, you know, a That's couple good. extra ingredients, but our base is always seven. And um, we wanted to keep it at that. And we ended up finding out that the shelf life from where we cut off is six months. Okay. And it's just like, it's, I mean, it literally is like kind of the holy grail. I don't want to be tooting our own horn too much, but we're even no. surprised at how good it's come out. Just, <laughs> yeah. We didn't like set out for this big you right. know, thing to make. The, we did just happen and it happened to be really great. And it, <laughs> I mean, and it, well. Modest, we're trying to, I'm trying to be modest, but I'm just really excited. Well, yeah, no, I mean, well, that's great. Well, it's like a really organic product that happened with a really organic process and we got a really organic result yeah so that's exciting yeah. that's really exciting um so so you mentioned your you just released a new product um flavor so how many flavors do you guys have currently and what are they they rotate we the um the ones that we have so far we have uh 10 flavors uh we have uh armagnac salted caramel mm. which is the one that folks just i bet yeah it's kind of reminds us of the remember haagen dazs rum raisin yes OG. yeah yeah og yeah. the og yeah. <laughs> but then with like swirls of um coconut sugar caramel yummy uh and then we have pistache pistachio Cafe espresso, but vanilla bourbon, um, vanilla bean, bergamot, chocolate decadence, mm. chocolate chip cookie dough, candied mint chocolate chip. Oh, interesting. Oh yeah, it's fantastic, and it doesn't taste like any of the mint fake stuff, fake yeah. ice creams that you would taste in the states there's nothing that tastes like this one i can <laughs> confidently say well that, there is you know. really good ice cream out there of course we're not like the, no there is no, 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 no. <laughs> i love your support <laughs> that's why i'm here and we also have a um uh oatmeal cookie vegan as well uh ice cream sandwich that we sandwich oh fun caramel uh, yeah that sounds phenomenal which the French have never seen. They never saw an ice cream sandwich. Really? Yeah. The, well, yeah. see, here's 
something that you don't know about the French is like, if the French are great at what they do in terms of their food, but they only do certain things and that's it. Right, they don't deviate from it. Yeah, and it's been that way for the last 200 years. Got it. So things like an ice cream sandwich, they're like, what is this? And mm-hmm. we're like, it's an ice cream sandwich. And they're like, really? And I'm just like, yeah. So, you know. They had, they, I think uh, there was some shops in Paris that came up with some ice cream sandwiches, classic ones, but in Bordeaux, which you would think the word, word would spread from Paris to Bordeaux, you know, ice cream sandwich exists. But we, we released it and people were like, what is it? Um, they would still at the shops where we sell the ice cream, they'd be like, we've never seen anything like this. Oh, wow. How interesting. I know. Yeah. It's, and it's fun. Like, we're like, oh, it's so cool yeah. like, that you have this experience, you know? Yeah, yeah. And to be a part of that and share it with them. And um, yeah, that is, that's super fun. Yeah. So if, if uh, when traveling happens again and, and people start to come and visit Bordeaux um, and it's obviously not just for the wine, it's also for delicious food, where can um, people find your products? Or do you guys have that listed on the website? How, how do we find you and support you when we get to travel to come and, and uh, see you guys in France? It depends where we land uh, because we might be going down south uh, right. to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's two two possible places that I really want to sell the ice cream, two restaurants. Uh, hopefully we can get a spot in this little hall where they, you know, you set up a little... It's like a, not, like a yeah. food hall stall kind of market? Yeah. yeah, which which is, I mean, that's what Europe is known for. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, she's traveled a lot. She oh, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. all the markets. I, yeah, I love all of the markets. They're they're most like inspirational, I think, for me. And it's such a, um, I mean, it's so exciting to see, you know, different types of products that we don't obviously see here in the States, but even just, you know, the color of them and the freshness of them just looks so different. And, um, but also just, you know, like, such a way of life it, it just feels different than like even our farmers markets a little bit here so um but yeah I, I know those those food stall um market places and they're great yeah yeah, yeah. They're, although you all do have berkeley bowl and whatnot and uh yeah unfortunately berkeley bowl is really far away from me so it doesn't oh, <laughs> oh all right all right I keep yeah. Yeah. We we unfortunately do not have uh, a Berkeley Bowls type of store up here in in Sonoma County. I wish we did. I mean, and we're in a in a good spot for it for sure. But um, and don't get me wrong, I mean the agriculture that is here in Sonoma County and Napa County is is really great. And I'm I think that's you know I'm I'm grateful to be able to call this part of of the world home for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And um, if we, uh, depending on where we stay, we'll just keep it updated on our Facebook and um, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, we also do uh, markets here in Bordeaux, uh, vegan markets. And we were mm-hmm. selling in a restaurant, but at the moment, we're just waiting for the season to warm up because mm. unlike the States, um, ice cream is eaten year round. Okay. More or less. In France, it's pretty seasonal. Like they eat yeah. it when it's hot, and then and that's it. The artsy, not artsy, the artisanal uh, glass or ice cream, sorry, that you could buy in a shop on the street, scooped. They all close. Oh, buy, really? Uh, yeah, you can buy mm-hmm. Magnum or what are the other Hagen Dazs they have here? The other brands you can buy them in a grocery store in the okay. tub. But the cute but the shop, shop- yeah, they close. Oh, wow. It's so right. something, again, you wouldn't think of in the States. I mean, they're is, a, a year-round occasion. <laughs> which is another reason why we were thinking about trying to transition more towards the South. Right. Because it's warmer and people will, will eat ice cream year Wrong. Right. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. So what? No, think about. 
sometimes yeah. <laughs> until you're in the middle of it you're like oh yeah right <laughs> like oh maybe this wasn't the right location to totally nail it on the project <laughs> you're, yeah i mean i would like you said it was kind of a or, organic success from the very beginning um but of course that always doesn't necessarily translate so like you said your location so yeah exactly you make it work uh so what is your what are your social handles so people can follow along and uh and be sure to visit you wherever you land we are on facebook uh, sorry kitty. okay we are on uh, facebook at du couchon glass bordeaux okay and uh instagram is du couchon vegan glass okay and glass just means ice cream um and yeah we're always putting up new pictures and i mean the the ice the ice cream looks phenomenal it looks um like you said like a traditional ice cream it has you know it it flow is the wrong word but i don't you know in a scoop it looks like you what yeah. you would expect from an ice cream like a yeah. traditional ice cream um and they look phenomenal they just look so delicious thank you so yeah. maybe we'll end up uh in, in the u.s yeah, yeah that's maybe. actually was that was going to be one of my questions was you know do you foresee ever coming either the product ever coming to the states and or yourselves ever coming back to the states yes and yes yes okay. and yes yes my uh, keep also, hurting. what's that yes 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 <laughs> leave, out, leave out the leave out the other part because that's Kind yeah of in we're just figuring things out but um yeah. if that comes through it would be pretty substantial yeah and we would come back for retirement here now just kidding i don't know we figured out how to do something of course uh, yeah. you know both i don't know we we're we have a very adventurous spirit and personalities and kind of feel like anything is possible so yeah i'm a firm believer in that one right yeah, yeah anything is possible you lose that 100 percent if you don't try so you don't ever know exactly yeah so uh for anyone who is looking to move abroad sorry. start a business okay sorry uh, move abroad start a business uh any you know any kind of advice you would give or even just jump into the food and beverage world uh what are just some quick advice pieces of advice you'd give follow your heart and your spirit but also do some background do the research do the research before you go in and i think for france in particular it's a very process oriented culture so mm. make sure you really have your ducks in a row before you come got it that's good advice and, yeah. and yeah. also um you know we 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 arrived like good old american cowboys not knowing the language and a word of advice unless you are just independently wealthy or retired and have a stash learn the language a little bit before mm. uh language we didn't i mean obviously we knew we had to learn language and we are but it's you know the older you get the harder it's to learn language and it's you really, it helps to have a base yeah and and you find that in america it's it's much easier to play things sort of fast and loose well europe really isn't like that <laughs> so so yeah, yeah. It's, it's be ready to slow down uh, or yeah. anywhere abroad um just do your research on culture yeah. policies of starting a business really find out if you like you know italy is probably a little more can not convenient but maybe a little bit easier spain france is very structured they're very known for their paperwork and oh they have yes. strict uh policies and just get to know if you want to come abroad and just live cool but if you want to start a business mm -hmm. 
Right. Follow your passion, but do the research. Get a little language under your under your feet and yeah. Oh, oh, a really good one too. Follow on Facebook. If you're gonna use social media, go to an expat community. Oh, that's a great, that's a great recommendation. On a, for example, we signed up on Bordeaux Expats and it changed our life from finding a um, place to live, finding friends, um, finding a little uh, work opportunity when we first arrived. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, it's great. Mm. I recommend that. That's, it's great. People are cool. When things were open, people want to meet up for drinks, lessons, oh, yeah. you know, practice, yeah. friends, blah, blah, blah. But it's that's actually, great. that was a question I did have is, um, you know, do, is there a large expat community uh, in Bordeaux or where you guys are within Bordeaux? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Big, very big. Yeah. Bordeaux has 260,000, almost said million, 260,000 uh, population. And I think the Bordeaux expat has like 6,000 oh. members. Okay. More. But well, that's just like the one that yeah. I follow. There's right. several. There's the right. American expat community, there's all bunch of expats. British. Um, British, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's really there's a lot. Yeah. Did you guys um feel as being Americans? Did you find any tension is the wrong word, but you know, like I think that's the right word. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where did you guys face any of that kind of adversity being American expats versus you know British expat kind of a thing? No. I mean, what do you mean? Like, what? well, are, are people, do people, most people think that everybody hates Americans, and a lot of people right. do. Well, y yes and no. I mean, it really depends um, because of the events of the last four years or so. That kind of really hurt uh, how people view Americans. But for the most part, as long as um, you're not one of the Americans who are. Right, as well, long as you're respectful and you are engaging and try to, yeah. you know, learn learn the culture and yeah, be a part of a community. Yeah. I feel like that usually goes a long way. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it did, yeah. the last administration sparked a lot of great conversations with the Frenchies. So uh, yeah, it's kind of, it could have worked to our benefit a little bit, you know, it's a good way to, have a conversation but uh as long as you try to speak the language yeah that's the thing that's the thing then they respect you sure if yeah. you just like hey how are you can i have a baguette you know and they're like yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> yeah yeah makes so, sense yeah yeah well Sylvie and Marlon, thank you so much for, for joining me today on Poppy and Vine Seeds Maker. It was so much fun chatting with you. I thank you again for, um, I know it's, I think, fairly late over there for you guys. So thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to either enjoying your ice cream in France one day or hopefully maybe in the not so distant future, enjoying it in the States one day. So uh, yeah. you will. this way, yes. um, definitely look us up and we'll. Definitely have some good vino and oh yes yes and good food and and good yeah. food. oh yeah all right well thank you again and uh, talk to you real soon okay okay bye, -bye. Again, thank bye. you bye.